Hi guys, my name is Emmanuel. Welcome to video number 16. Today we're going to learn about retain cycle. And um, I'm just going to use an illustration to explain the concept and then we're going to jump right into code. Okay? Now first, what is a retain cycle? Now this is when two objects reference each other in such a way that the system is unable to remove um, the object from memory. Okay. Now um, in iOS we actually have something called Automatic Reference Counting, ARC for short, and this is used or it basically helps the system manage memory. So it informs the system on whether or not an object should be removed. And we're going to see how this works. Now let's say we have a square object. Whenever we create this object, the reference count is 1. Let's also create a circle object. The reference count is also 1. Now if the square object references the circle object, the count is incremented by 1 to 2. The same way if the circle object references the square, the count is incremented by 1 to 2. All right? Now if we were to set the value of the square object to nil, what happens is the reference count is decremented by 1. But the thing is, the system doesn't free up memory because the count is 1. So it only frees up memory whenever the reference count is 0. Hence, the retain cycle. In other words, memory leakage. Now, how can we fix this? What we need to do is to make one of these a weak reference. Now, let's see how this works. So again, we have a square. The count is 1. And uh, we have a circle. The reference count is 1. Now, the square references the circle count is incremented by 1 to 2 and next we're going to reference the square but this time make it a weak reference okay and when you do this the reference count does not increment right it just remains the same so if we were to set the value of the square to nil what happens is the reference count is decremented by 1 to 0 and then removed from memory and since it's removed from memory the circle object's reference count is also decremented by 1 right and if we were to set the value of um, the circle object to nil, then it's going to be decremented by 1 to 0 and then removed from memory. And we have a clean slate, right? Easy, isn't it? Nice. So we're going to see how this is implemented by code. So just create a new project and let's see how this works. If you're enjoying the video so far, just take a second to click on the subscribe button and uh, let's continue. Here we are. What do we do next? Uh, let's create a class and I'm just going to call this user and uh, let's say our user has a first name like this of type string and also has a last name of type string as well and finally our user has a spouse Ooh. <laughs> hope I got that though so yep and now this I'm going to make optional right so you could be single, you could be married. Now let's actually create our initializer. So in it, we're gonna pass in our first name like this as a string. I'm gonna pass in the last name as well as a string. And the next thing we're gonna do is to say self dot first name be equal to whatever was passed in, and uh, self dot last name as well to be whatever was passed in. And I think we're good. Awesome. Great. Now we're going to create two variables right at the top in our view controller class. And I'm going to call the first one, um, let's say Peter from Family Guy. And this is going to be of type user as an optional because it could be nil. And the next person we're going to use is, uh, let's say, Lewis. Right? And this is also going to be user. An optional user. Next, in our view did load, we want us to create objects of both Peter and Lewis. So I'm going to say Peter should be equal to a user. I'm going to pass in the first name and last name as Peter Griffin. We're going to do the same thing for Lewis. And like that, OUIS. And who do I call her? Uh, let's say she was married to Quagmire. I don't know. Cool. So now we have two objects, uh, Peter and Lewis, right? Now, I'm going to add a deinitializer here. 
d init just so we know when um, the object is destroyed. So I'm going to add a print statement and say first name has been removed from memory. All right? Awesome, this is good. Now, if I were to run this program, well, first of all, let's actually set Peter to nil. Nice. So let's run this and see what we have. So if you look over here, you can see Peter has been removed from memory. Now what happened was, here we created an instance of Peter, right? So the reference count is 1. We created an instance of Lewis, the reference count is 1. And right here we set the value of Peter to be nil. So the value, uh, the reference count rather, was decremented by 1 to 0 and then freed from memory. Hence this guy being printed here, right? If we do the same thing for Lewis, like this, and set it to nil, I run this again, I'm going to get Lewis was removed from memory as well. Awesome, now this is good. There's no leakage, right? And let's actually implement a uh, memory leakage right here. So what we're going to do, just get rid of this, and we're going to say peter.spouse, and we're going to set this to be equal to Lewis, right? And we're going to say Lewis dot spouse to be equal to Peter. Now remember from our diagram initially, what we did here is at this point we're saying that uh, we're creating a reference to um, Lewis, right? We're creating a reference to Lewis and so the reference count is going to be incremented by one. So here the reference count is two, right? And the same thing we're doing to Lewis, the reference count is also going to be two. Now, if we were to set the value of Peter to nil, the reference count of Peter at this point is going to be 1, and so it's not going to be removed from memory. Let's run it and see if I'm lying. I hope I'm not. <laughs> Anyways, so you can see that the application is running, but we didn't get anything printed out here because there's a retain cycle. So even though we've set Peter to be nil, the system didn't free up that memory. Now how can we get this fixed? We learned that we can simply make it a weak reference, right? Now, how do we do that? So you can see over here that this is what we are referencing, the spouse. We can simply just convert this and write the keyword weak right here. And when we do that, we can run it again. And like magic, Peter has been removed from memory. Just like that. So since we made it a weak reference, these guys are one, okay? And then um, it's just able to, when, when you set this guy as nil, it just decrements to zero and then it's removed from memory. And if we try the same thing for um, Lewis, like this, set it to nil, if we run it, we're gonna see Lewis as well as removed from memory. Awesome. Great. So I think we still have some time, so I'm just going to show one more example of when we might have a retain cycle. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new view controller. So I'm just going to call this uh, second view controller, and it's going to extend the UI view controller class like that. And then we're going to implement the uh, view did load, and then super dot view did load. Wonderful. Now the next thing I want to do here is to set the views background color to um, let's use something we'll use cayenne I guess. Alright. Now we need to show the second view controller and just because of time I'm just gonna create this in the view did load. So whenever the application launches I want to use the navigation controller and then call the push view controller and then pass in second view controller like ooh, not like that man view controller this one right and then animate true now this is actually nil so we need to head over to our storyboard so main.storyboard and then we need to embed 
this guy in a navigation controller right here. Awesome. So let's go back and see if everything works as it should. All right, so it works well. And uh, the moment the application launches, it opens up the second view controller. Right. Now the next thing I want us to do is to add a dinit method here, just so we know whether or not the object has been removed from memory. So I'm gonna say, just put a print statement there and say, um, second VC has been removed from memory. Oh yeah. Try it again. So I go back and right here, it's been removed. Actually, let me just comment this thing out. I don't want any of these things printing. All right. Now let's actually look at the memory leakage. Now remember from a couple of videos ago, uh, when we spoke about observers using the um, notification center, what we did was, let's do that in our view did load. We wanted to add or create an observer with say notification center dot default dot add observer. And I'm just gonna use this one for name and for the name, I'm actually just going to pass in anything. Macro for object, nil. Q, let's actually say the main Q. And, and right here, we simply just have our notification like that, even though I don't need it. So I just get it out. And then finally, let's say we want to um, update the background color as well. And we're just going to say background color should be equal to dot red. All right, now looking at this, I'm sure everything looks good, right? Let's run this and see if it actually deinitializes. So I'm going to run the application. So we're here. We go back. Hmm, what is happening? So you can see that the second view controller is actually still in memory. Now the thing is, right here we're actually referencing self. And this is a strong reference. I remember from our solution, in order for us to fix this um, retain cycle, we need to make it a weak reference. Now for a closure, what we need to do is right here, add a square bracket and write weak self. So what we're simply saying is, make the reference to ourself weak. And when you do that, it's possible for self to be nil. So right here, we need to chain this as an optional. All right, so when you make this a weak self, self can be nil. So we need to pass in a question mark. Now if we go ahead and run this again, and we go back, we should see that the second VC has been removed. Now there's actually another solution. Rather than using weak, we could also use an owned, like this. Now the main difference between weak and unowned is that weak can be nil, while unowned is not nil. So you can see here from the warning, cannot use optional chaining for non-optional value. Just have to get rid of this and then run this. And if we go back, you see again that it was removed, right? Now, um. I often don't use unowned. If you encounter any scenario where self is actually nil, it's gonna cause your app to crash. So I always tend to just use weak. It's safer that way. So yeah. And uh, there are actually a lot more examples of places where um, you could experience memory leakages. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot um, exhaust all possible scenarios of where you might have uh, retain cycles or memory leakages, but it does get easier, it gets better. So uh, just pay attention to your um, your references, pay attention to your closures, and you'll be fine, okay? And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, click the like button, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.